This is our 2021 signs for Westgate Middle School. We have been working on our projects for seven weeks. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we can't allow you to come and see our projects. But thanks to Mr. Croxell and his students, we are able to share our projects with you. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the show. show. Cooper and I built a solar oven and did research on it. I think the solar oven is really cool because it can cook almost anything without electricity. If there was a power outage, you can use a solar oven. Or if you go camping and you don't know how to start a fire, just use a solar oven. A cool fact that the solar oven can work on top of Mount Everest. The marshmallows and pizza was very good. The marshmallow was mushy, but still good. The pizza was my favorite, it was just right. I really liked it. It was very easy to make. I'm sure I would use this in the future. Hi, my name is Alexandria and my project is called The Race of Growth and it is um, testing whether spring water will or will not be um, sink water in a race to see which kind of water will help a sunflower grow the best. And my hypothesis was that spring water will work the best growing a sunflower and my hypothesis was correct and the most the best experience I had during my experiment was just knowing it was over because it was really stressful for me because time was getting shorter and shorter every day.
Uh, I'm Anthony. My name is, well, I'm Anthony Collins, and my project is Germs vs. Soap. I am DJ George, and my project is Water Mixing a Lucky Kudgy. My name is Benjamin Hartsub, and I'm going, this is my project that I tested to see what, which seasoning would boil water faster. What did you find out? Um, people boil water to make things like noodles, vegetables, or potatoes. I want to know if adding a seasoning to the water would make it boil faster. What seasoning will make water boil the fastest? What did you find out, Ben? Um, I found out that salt, if you add salt to it, um, it'll boil the fastest. Which one did you think it was going to boil faster correct? Mm, the salt. So your hypothesis was correct? Yes. Can you tell me my hypothesis was correct? I thought salt would boil faster, and it did. Go ahead. My hypothesis was correct. This, the salt water boiled the fastest. Hello, my name is Brianna, and I did my experiment on mold. Um, what I used was bread, American cheese, and ricotta cheese, and maybe an onion. And my hypothesis was normally you think it was the bread. The bread would normally mold first. But to my surprise, it, my conclusion, or the conclusion, was the reek-smelling onion. I'm Johanna and I'm in fifth grade. I got different kinds of bubble gum and blew bubbles to see what kind of bubble gum blew the biggest bubble. Hi, my name is Brooklyn Saban and I'm in fifth grade. Our title of the experiment is The Biggest Bubble. 
My hypothesis was correct. We all thought that double bubble would make the biggest bubble, and I was correct. Hi, my name is Harmony Spifidi, and I'm in fifth grade. Our topic is that I wanted to see the biggest bubble. The next time you get gum, see which one blows the biggest bubble. The biggest bubble. I'm Cassidy Miller and um, I'm going to tell you about a Mimusa pudica. It has some nicknames like an action plant, tickle plant, sleepy plant, shy plant, touch me not, shame plant, and I think a couple more. And I was doing a contest between which would grow better between if I started one in a napkin or dirt. and I first thought the one in the napkin would start growing better, but I was wrong and the ones in the dirt were growing better than the ones in the napkin. And I was... Can you show us some that you have there? Yeah. Okay, Nick, go ahead. So which ones are these? Can you tell me which ones these are? Yeah, these were the ones in the napkin and these are the ones that I planted in the dirt. I tried to grow 50-50 each, but only a couple grew in the napkin, and only about 15 grew in these, and only three grow in these. I planted some in here, but they didn't end up growing.
My name is Courtney. I um, put my, the thing named colorful marker because I use three different type of marker and I use um, three marker and I leave it in for 24 hours and then um, the brown one was the one who worked the battle. And then um, I was wrong on my thing, what you like, my help on it. I um, messed up, I like, I didn't mess up, but I thought Sharpie gonna work better because it leave on your skin the longest, but it didn't. Hi, my name is Courtney Jade Barker. My experiment is bath bombs. I use three different bath bombs in different temperatures, ice cold, lukewarm, and hot water. My, what I thought was gonna happen is the cold would take the longest to disintegrate, and that is what happened, actually. And hot water was the first one to disintegrate. My name is Daniel Bassan and my project's name is Underwater Magnets. Hello, I am a Dasho Mink and um, I did a project about hydrating my uh, crickets. 
and the project name is Hydrating Crickets. Um, I uh, fed my crickets, and I was um, I was seeing if if having it in the uh, paper towel was better than having it in dirt, and I figured out that having it in the dirt was better. So um, because I don't uh, how do I pretty much having it in the uh, paper towel got rid of the water faster, and I needed to stay longer for my crickets to last longer. So um, since I uh, tested that, my crickets have been living longer than what they used to since I used the um, paper towels. And we would put the paper towel on the food while the water's on it, so I didn't think that would help, I didn't think that helped either way. So um, yeah, having the dirt was better. And figuring that out helped a lot because we go for crickets very slowly since our uh, spiders and lizards don't need them that much throughout the day. So, yeah. Well, it's between cows and almond because almond's made with milk and cow's milk is full of cow's milk and... Well, cows, it's, that's a hard one because cow's milk prevents d diseases and fractures. And, but soy milk is a non-dairy plant-based milk. It's made from soybeans and water. It's good for people who are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant is where you have trouble digesting dairy products. And almond milk is a plant-based milk made from almond nuts. It is also a non-dairy product. Pe it's good for people who need to stay away from dairy products. Well, it's between cows and almond because almond's made with milk and cow's milk is full of, cow's milk and, well cow's, it's, that's a hard one because cow's milk prevents d diseases and fractures. And, but soy milk is a non-dairy plant-based milk. It's made from soybeans and water. It's good for people who are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant is where you have trouble digesting dairy products. And almond milk is a plant-based milk made from almond nuts. It is also a non-dairy product. Pe it's good for people who need to stay away from dairy products. Hi, I'm Donovan Shellcross. My project is Brighten Your Day with a Solar Array. I did this because my parents always say that it's too hot to have a fire to make s'mores. So I found some recyclables and started building. The s'mores didn't end up cooking, but I ate them anyway. My name is Emmy, and my project's name is What's Up With Fizz. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, um, in our house, Pop always gets left out, and it really annoys me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, the first thing we did here was my, uh, we poured cans and bottles of Pop into clear cups. We uh, set a timer for 15 minutes and took a Pop I took a drink of each pop and determined the fizziness. I then recorded my data and I repeated steps two to five until they go flat. Um, my hypothesis was I thought that the orange crush bottle will have fizziest, fizziness the longest. My reason for this is that it seems to have the most fizz in the start. I also predict that the can of Coca-Cola will go flat first, maybe because of the dark, the darkness of the color. Um, the results are um, the ginger ale stayed fizziness for the longest period of time and the canned orange Fanta went flat fastest. Most of the other sodas started carbonating for the same amount of time. All of them pretty much went flat after about an hour at room temperature with bottled ginger ale lasting the longest. Hello, my name is Anjali Marie Rogers, and my project is How Light Affects Plants. Hi, my name is Chloe Phillips, and my title is Pop Rock Surprise. All right, John, see you. Hi, my name is Evan Biznak. My project is Lights with Lemons. Can I use four lemons as a source of electric electricity to light up an head 
light bulb like I saw on YouTube. Iron Lord 11 has a voltage of 9 to 10, 9 of 10 a watt, which means it would take 4 lemons to make 1 lead free volt light, look, light work. I learned that galvanized nail is a negative charge and a penny is a positive charge. I learned that even though it's work, it works on YouTube, it may not work at home. Thank you. My name is Braden Schwerhall, and my name is Evan Dorn. And our, our project, project is, is One Guardian, Guardian Leviosa. Leviosa. We made wands with magnets, then we lifted up a feather with a paper clip on it. Then we wrote down our results. Our hypothesis was incorrect. We thought that the one magnet would be the best, and the four magnets would be the worst, and the, th and the three magnets would be the in the middle. But when we tested, the three magnets would be the best, and out of all of them, the, uh, the one magnet would be the middle, and the four magnets would be the worst. Um, my name's Foster, and I meet this um, volcano. Uh, I meet this volcano with vinegar and and red dye and baking soda and there's pictures of volcano and then I drew this volcano and yeah if you want to hear my last name this is says Carter and I'm ready to um, put this in here. All right, it's time to um, put the vinegar in the volcano. Three, two, one. Wow. Pretty cool. That's what I thought it would work. Hi, my name is Ella Gunning and I am in fifth grade. My title of the exper my experiment is what popcorn pops the best. My topic is that I wanted to see what pop popcorn has the least amount of kernels left. I did three bags of each brand of popcorn and I preheated the microwave for two minutes and 30 seconds. I pressed the popcorn button on the microwave and then I put the popcorn in a large bowl and counted the kernels. My hop Hypothesis was incorrect. I thought that Act 2 would win, but instead Great Value uh, had 11 unpopped kernels. The next time your family gets popcorn for a movie, count the kernels. My name is Gary. My project is Ooh Black. I'm trying to see which liquids are which liquids can make you black and which liquids can't. Now, let's think. So Gary, what mixtures did you put together? I put Sprite, vinegar, apple juice, and orange juice. And I also made the original copy just for show the water. Um, my name is Randy. My name is Olivia. My name is Hayden. And our project is how much salt to make an egg float. <clears throat> add. Uh, you add three quarters of a uh, quarter cup. Bleh, quarter. I can't say that word. Quarter cup of salt to. Add three quarters cup of the salty solution you prepared to cup one. Add three quarters cup to p of plain tap water to cups two through five. 
Add three cu quarters cup of the salty solution you prepared to cup two and mix it. Add three quarters cup of the salt solution from two to cup three and mix it. Use a, sp um, so use a soap spoon to place an egg in cup five. Use the spoon to take the egg out and place it in cup four. Repeat the process with cups three, two, and then one. In which cup does the egg first float? And so this is the materials right here. This is the pictures that we did it. Then uh, the materials are one egg water, uh, measuring cup, large container, one half. one half cup of table salt, five cups. five cups that hold at least six ounces each, pre permanent marker, permanent marker, three Two. spoons mm. for mixing salty, salty solution, soup spoon, spoon, spoon for, for egg transfers. Egg transfers. The variables, independent variable, the raw egg will stay the same during the experiment. Dependent variable is the water since we will be adding salt to it. Controlled variable will be the amount of salt we are adding to the water. You want to read the hypothesis? My hypothesis is, hypothesis is that I think the egg will not float in regular mm. regular what because what because it is heavy but it we if we added three tablespoons of salt to the cup of water with the egg that it would float on top of the cup to the top of the cup the top of the cup and introduction have you, have you wondered why some objects float in water and others sink? The answer to why this happens is something called density. The density of the water compared to the density of the object in the water. If an object is less dense than the water around it, then the object will float. So because salt water is denser than fresh water, some things float more easier in the ocean. You can make your own dense water by adding salt to tab water. In fact, when you add enough salt, you can make the water so tense that the egg will actually flow it in it. We'll, sh we'll show you how we explored the science act. Abstract. Our project is on the to topic of how to get an egg to float in water with just adding salt. I was interested in this type of experiment because I didn't believe you could actually get an egg to float with just water and salt. During our experiment, we found out that to get an egg to float to the top, to of, the the top of the cup of water, um, we had to have we have we had to have 8 teaspoons of salt to a cup of water with our egg inside. The reason for the experiment was to give an example of, of the, the term, term density. density. And that's all. I'm Mr. Croxel and I'm here at the Science Fair at Westgate Gymnasium and I'm joined by Haley. Hi, Haley. Can you tell me the names of the other folks that worked on the project with you? Dominica and Ariana. Fantastic. And what did you do for your project? Um, we d figured out what, like, what the difference is, is in the Black Plague and the coronavirus. And what did you find out about the biggest differences between the Black Plague and the coronavirus? Um, that schools are that school was different because with the Black Plague, school stopped completely, and with coronavirus, it didn't stop completely. Why in the world? did the coronavirus not stop schools completely? Because we have better technology than back then. Right. So we talk in technology like virtual technology, being able to go online? Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, were the diseases both as deadly or is one more deadly than the other? 
I'm, I'm pretty sure they're both the same. Gotcha. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, how to make a volcano work. So you add a little bit of the powder. And you add a little bit of the crystals. Then you get a little bit of water. Cool. You're gonna do anything else, Chase? You're gonna bubble up a little bit more? Um. Hmm? You want me to do that one? Um, I'm Jocelyn, and my project is fruit and liquid. I just put two of two different fruits in a cup with one of four liquids, and I left them there and saw which liquid kept them looking clean the longest and pure air. I didn't do anything else to them. I just left them in the cups and saw what happened. The lemon juice. I I used tap water, bottled water, lemon juice, and vinegar. Which one was the worst? Um, the bottled water. Really? So, in your opinion, what was the fun part about the experience? Um, the fun part was watching the fruit over the period of time it took to um rot, and I just yeah, that was. Pretty much it. That was my favorite part of it. Um, hi, my name is Jordan. Hi, my name is Michaela. And we are in fifth grade. Our experiment is growing crystals. We did a cold environment and a hot environment. I did the warm. And I did the cold. In the warm weather, if you can see, they grow better than the cold. Yes. And there is a lot of chemicals in them, so we had to be very careful with that. Let's bang it up. Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll get the one. What was the most fun doing the project? Um, Making it. Yeah. Pretty much the entire thing. Making the projects the best part. Yeah. It was uh, kind of difficult with the hypothesis. So what, can you tell me what your hypothesis was and what you learned? Um, my hypothesis was that the crystal in the sun may not grow as well as the um, one in the basement. My my hypothesis was crystals will grow and and form in the warm and sun lit atmosphere, better than crystals that are placed in a dark cold atmosphere. And um, for my hypothesis, the one in the basement did not grow as the one in the sun. My hypothesis will mine will grow better in the sun.
Hi, my name is Kamika Gibson, and my project was on lollipops. I let my class eat three lollipops. They had a caramel pop, a Tootsie Pop, and a Blow Pop. I thought the Blow Pop was going to win, but the caramel pop did. Hello, my name is Katrina, and uh, my project is how long do animals sleep in their diet, uh, or, or for short, hibernation. What did you find out, Katrina? Who slept the longest? Uh, from my research, it is, a, is koala. They sleep for 22 to, to uh, 29 hours. Wow, that sounds like you. It does sound like you. Yeah. Which one slept the last? It what is a you? giraffe. Uh, it, for, it only sleeps 1.9 hours in a day. My name is Caden Timmons and I am in fifth grade and I'm doing a presentation on bicycles. People use bicycles for travel and for fun and some jobs. Bicycle races too and <laughs> Do you enjoy bicycling? Yeah. Tell me where you like to ride your bicycle. I like to ride my bicycle on my road and down my hill. Hi, I'm Caden Haney. My project is about density. The name of the project is Does It Float? The oil stayed at the top. I learned that density is important in some things in life. I, like, I love to learn about density. I'm Kaylee Kraus. I'm Aubrey Lyle. And our experiment is called the Gummy Bear Experiment. What we did is put them in different liquids like apple juice, water, milk, salt water, and Sprite. And some of them grew big. Some of them grew big because of the thing called amosis. The gummy bears water got removed when they were made, so they suck in the water to make them big again. Hi, my name is Kendra. I experiment on Skittles. Um, I'm a fifth grader. My experiment is called Skittles. I will melt the Skittles. Um, the sweet tea melted the fastest, and well, I thought the vinegar was going to melt, but it didn't melt the fastest. It melted the second. Hi, my name is Kenneth Heath, and I'm in fifth grade. Hi, my name is Kyler Allen Page, and I'm in fifth grade. Um, our title is Hammerhead Shark. We did this project to teach, because we thought it was cool, and we did it to teach people about the hammerhead shark. Do you know that a hammerhead shark can live to 30 years? Hello, I'm Logan Cornell, and this is my project, Terrific Teeth. In my project, I put shark teeth in different liquids, but the teeth didn't change, most likely because the surface of shark teeth is 100% fluoride. And that was kind of a bummer, but it was still fun to do this experiment, and I hope I can do a different experiment, and I learned a lot. Okay, my name is Logan Donaldson. I did this project with Seth Long. Um, I'm in fifth grade, room 220. I did how to make quicksand. And first you put, you put high pressure air, then it bubbles. Then you gotta push down the ping pong balls and it'll pop right back up. If you put the ping pong balls down in and you turn it off, it will stay. I don't know what else to talk about. The materials and 
that I that hypothesis and yeah. What was your hypothesis? We think it will work because we have the materials. Did it work? Yeah. That's good. Uh, what, all, what were all the materials? As I can see on the poster board. We went, we went with an, an inch in PVC pipes, 11 inch pu pipes, one half, one half in PVC for inch for PVC pipe. Hi, my name is Michaela Fennell. I worked on this project with Brooklyn Lunsford, but she moved. My project is called The Planets. Perfect. Hello, my name is Malia Galliuti. My, my project is all about sugar. Eef. The title of my project is All, all That Sugar, Oh My. Project the drinks. My project is about how much sugar people drink on a daily basis. The, my lowest one is the school chocolate milk, which is 22 grams. My second one, which is has get is Gatorade, which is 21 grams. Red Bull has 29 grams. Shy banana smoothie has 36 grams. Sweet tea, sweet tea has 42 grams. Mountain Dew has 46 grams and Coke has, is the most, which has 65 grams. So before doing this project, which one did you think was going to have the most sugar? Coke. Coke? Hi, Mary Lynn Thomas, and I did a project on Bethany Hamilton, and I saw a movie called Soul Surfer, and in, in, in class I also watched unstoppable and I wanted to see how long it took Bethany Hamilton to do to learn stuff with one arm because she got her arm bit off by a shark and what did you learn there? I learned that it was kind of hard and how she had to go through it and learn how to surf again but it was also kind of easy. What did you do for your experiment? I saw how long it took with, well, I did task, and I saw how long it took with one arm and two arms. And what was your conclusion? Um, it did take longer with um, one arm than two arms, but in, except with one of them, because it took, it was making the bed, and it took shorter with one arm, shorter time. Hi, my name is Noah Kinsey, and here's my project, Tooth Be Told. I conducted this experiment to see the certain effects different drinks would, would have on your teeth for an extended period of time. I took five adult teeth and placed them into a different liquid, I used Mountain Dew, Apple Juice, Blue Gatorade, milk, and tap water. After three and six days, I photographed and recorded my results. In the first three days, you could definitely notice a color and texture change. After six days, they were, there were major pigment changes as well as several signs of decay in the Mountain Dew, Apple Juice, and Blue Gatorade. Subjects the milk and water showed very little change. In conclusion, di drinks with a high acidity and sugar con content with a certain food coloring would significant significantly decay and stain our teeth if not taken care of properly. I definitely will be brushing my teeth more having done this experiment. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Paul and I am researching, I researched about the hu human body. Uh, I research, I've been hard researching s different stuff like the ribs, tongue, nose, the brain, dreaming, lungs, and, st and skin. I have a lot of stuff that you can think of, like did you know during your lifetime you can create enough sal saliva to fill up two poles? Um, this is my project. It's called Mountain Explosion, and I'm going to use Coca-Cola and Mentos to see how big it to go. I'm going to pour Coca-Cola and Mentos inside of here. The Mentos are already inside. And I'm going to pour it in. Hi, my name is Presley Nicole Walker. I'm 11 years old. My favorite color is blue. My title is Which Liquid Gets to Stain Out? And that, that's my title. And I had so much fun doing this project. My title for my, pro my, title for my project is Which Liquid Gets to Stain Out? I cut up a shirt. I colored them with a marker. Then I seen which liquid got the stain out of the shirt. The dish liquid got the stain out and the color on the shirt was black and now it looks pink. That, at the end, I was surprised that dish liquid got the stain out. I couldn't believe that. I liked when I washed the colors out and I had a lot of fun and I learned that there still were just color markers, colored markers out of the shirt. I had fun. Hi, my name is Riley Search and I researched about bullfrogs. And a fact that I learned is Bullfrogs have toxic skin, and bullfrogs are brown, green, black, white, dark brown, and yellow, and they're eight inches long. I researched about bullfrogs because I thought bullfrogs were interesting, and their predators are lar large water snakes snapping turtles, alligators, raccoons, and... Hi, my name is Rowan. This is my project. It's called Egg Experiment. How much salt does it take to float an egg? It took... It took four and a half tablespoons to float the egg, and... I chose to do this because it's easy and simple and I had all the supplies I need at home. In the end, it took four and a half tablespoons to float the egg. My name is Sean Conrad. I am in fifth grade. Our project is called the Leak Proof Bag. My name, my name, Edward. My, I am Edward Morris, and I am, am in fifth grade. We found out if you poke the pencil in the same hole, it will leak.
I'm Sherman, and I'm in fifth grade. And I did a I did a science fair project about haunted houses and what part of the brain triggers fear, and what what can happen. The part of the brain that triggers fear is the amygdala. It's an almond-shaped collection of cells and lower portion of in the lower portion of the brain that plays major roles in our behavior and emotions. There are two amygdalas in the brain, one for each side of the brain. Since there are two, the plural term is amygdala. There are t they are in the temporal lobe of the section of the brain. Their purpose is a key in pro processing strong emotions such as fear along with our reaction to the emotion while working with the prefrontal lobe. Fight or flight is a natural response of the bo body. The amygdala is what triggers this response. The term fight or flight is widely known with within the workings of a haunted attraction. It is the main thing actors must pay attention to while scaring. When you get scared, the process of fight or flight is starts in a fraction of a second with with a massive increase of adrenaline, dilation of your pupils and and an increase of blood flowing to your large into your large muscles once the adrenaline reaches your brain the amygdala overrides your rational response due to the override instead of rationalizing your emotion you will immediately react to with with either a fight swinging fist or a flight action running away the, the temporal lobe is like around here and this is the amygdala inside. It's like a little almond shape. I'm Vincent Fox, and this is my DIY lava lamp. For the sci science project, I mix vegetable oil and water to see if it would make the effect. And I put Alka-Seltzer so I could like make a tornado in it. And then I put glitter and stars so it could look better. And I mixed vegetable oil and water. My hypothesis was correct, and it actually made a lava lamp. I'm Sophie. I'm Violet. Uh, we're in fifth grade. Um, and today we're going to be showing you how a rainbow is made. Um, so to see it, it, the sun would have to be shining and it would put rain into prisms. Um, also, the sun has to be in a direct position to be able to take the rain into the prisms. And one of the myths is a leprechaun can be killed with iron and a four-leaf clover. And did you know uh, the leprechauns actually hate humans? and that's why they hid the pot of gold. And the longest raining rainbow is four hours long. Nine hours. Or nine hours long. And the, and, uh, the, the most interesting uh, fact about the leprechauns is that they actually made the myth by getting captured and for their freedom they told a couple that they could find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And we worked very hard on this project. We are doing this experiment because we want to know which tastes better, rock candy made with brown sugar or rock candy made with regular sugar. Everybody likes rock candy, and we have never made it. It, sh uh, it would be something new for us. Will there, will there be a difference in taste and color between the rock candy made with the regular sugar and the rock candy made with the brown sugar? Our hypothesis is that there will be a difference because the brown sugar has molasses and the granulated sugar doesn't. You do the flavor. Like. 
So Melita made uh, this, and this is the regular sugar. And this one is the flavored one. And then up here is the brown sugar, which kind of has um, a caramel color to it. And then the other two are the other ones that I made. Okay, keep going with the variables. Um, the independent um, granulated sugar and brown sugar, um, the dependent um, taste and appearance of the rock candy uh, constant amount of ingredients used for food coloring, temperature, amount of water. Oh yeah, that's right, the presentation. So what we did to do this was we boiled the sugar with the water at 300 to 310 Fahrenheit and waited for it to cool for about five minutes. We dipped our um, yarn and skewers into some water and then rolled it in sugar and then we dipped and then we used something to hold it up and we put it into the jar and then we waited for about two weeks for it to set and crystallize. The materials that we use for this um, are granulated sugar, brown sugar, string, water, food coloring, um, um, a pot, uh, glass jars or cups, and as uh, and a wooden spoon. And some flavoring. Yeah. No, I'm doing the uh, conclusion. The granulated sugar came out of the jar easily and formed a good bit and tasted like regular sugar. The brown sugar came out a little harder, but it was still fairly easy and formed less well and tasted kind of burnt, but it was still good. We think it did this because of the molasses. The flavored rock candy turned out the best. It formed, hardened, and tasted the best. We made rock candy by following the steps we found. When it was done, we had one that was flavored, one that was regular, and one that was brown sugar. We took the rock candy out of the jars. It came out easily. The brown sugar the brown sugar tasted kind of burnt, but it still but it had a good flavor. The regular the regular sugar tasted like sugar, and the flavored uh, hardened more than the others. And that's how the brown, brown sugar, sugar turned out. Yeah. And then we have our pictures of the process of how that went. This is um, what it looked like when it was in the jar and hardened. And then this is what it looked like when it came out.